All right, so this is our propagation greenhouse, which is um, passive solar heated and uh, compost heated as well. So we've got two, two types of heating systems and that's all of our heat that we use in this, in this, in this greenhouse. And the mistress wow. came on. Let me, um, I can shut these off though. All right, so this is uh, just galvanized, uh, I think one inch galvanized tubing that you use for building uh, chain link fences. And this is the top bar of a chain link fence. You can just get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. And galvanized so they last a long time. And then you just take a piece of wood, uh, drill a hole in it to space the two bars at the right distance. And then um, I use a wood to metal screw um, that goes from the wood to, to the metal tubing to um, you can see the screw right there to kind of hold that in place. And also have these wheels, like if you need to move them by yourself, you can attach wheels to them through these holes. So some of them have holes in them and that way you can kind of drag them along. That was an adaptation that I made to them. But if you use the wheels, you want to get wheels that don't turn important but um, two people you know can grab both ends and you can move you know ten to eight flats depending on your flat size so you just pick them up just pick them up yeah pick this one up here so presumably you have yeah so you've got one loaded with flats yeah obviously you want them to bar space so that your flats rest exactly yeah two people right here and that's not particularly heavy no nope, even though something wet yeah, so you can get a massive amount of flats in and out of the greenhouse. And then we also use these for um, curing our garlic as well. We'll stack the garlic on, garlic on these with the bulbs on either side, and then I'll put um, another board or bar to make it uh, in the middle so things don't fall through, and then I'll put another board or bar on top to kind of hold everything in place. And then you can cure all your garlic on here, and it makes getting the garlic out of the field really quick because you can just pull these out to the field load all your garlic on it, and then load these onto a harvest wagon, and then bring them into the greenhouse, use this whole bench system. So in here we use the, we have all these barrels that are filled with water. So this acts as thermal mass, it absorbs heat out of the greenhouse in the daytime, so it keeps the greenhouse cooler during the day. Are you on the north side here? Um, well, this greenhouse is around the entire perimeter. Okay. And because um, all of our plants, none of the plants are on the ground, they're all up high, so we don't have to worry about any shading effect of the barrels. But um, the bar they keep the greenhouse cooler in the day and then warmer at night because they heat up during the daytime, pull all that heat out, and then re radiate that heat at night when, when it's cooler. So having these barrels in here is equivalent to burning about 2.4 gallons of propane every night um, without having to purchase that propane. It's just that's how much heat is generated and stored by the barrels. Stored in released by the barrels. Um, the other then, uh, Explain real quick, so these salt horses are just to hold uh, your your plant tray stretchers, <laughs> this is what yeah. they look like to me. Uh, and then this is all sort of a modular greenhouse setup. You can set these stretchers and trays wherever you need them. Yeah, I usually have a setup just like this with a little space between them. And that way you can put um, two bench tops on it and then you can walk between them so you can access everything for thinning. So for each of these saw horses are two yeah. essentially bench tops wide. Yeah, because our, our transplant flats are a little bit bigger than these, so you really can't fit more than two on here with our transplant flats. But another benefit of this, um, of these that I just realized, is that we started harvesting all of our microgreens in the greenhouse, and our um, harvest bins fit perfectly between these. So the harvest bin, you can drop down in here. So make these the width of your harvest bin. You can drop it in here, then when you're harvesting microgreens, it's very easy to clip them, harvest them off here right into the bin. And then we don't even have to take these trays out of the greenhouse. That was my coworker who figured that out. Thank God, she's smart. <laughs> you gotta have more farm person yeah. on the farm. Yeah. I love how simple and modular this stuff is. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, awesome. Well, I, I think it. modular is, I've, I feel like a, a, some folks get carried away and they'll spend a lot of money on a system that locks them into place. Mm -hmm. um, that isn't modular or maneuverable or doesn't change with their with a growing system or with the size of their farm. And this one, you can have as many or as few as you want. You can set them up really anywhere that you want inside of here. Yeah, and having the barrels 
um, you know, using the barrels as the bench top uh, as, a, as a surface to set these on and making the sawhorses the same height. I mean, just not having to build another sawhorse for the other side of these pays for all the barrels right there and time and effort so um, and money and expense. So these barrels are really doing, you know, triple duty for us. And then actually quadruple duty because some of these barrels have 50 feet of pipe embedded in them. So when we extract heat from that slab, that same pipe that's pulling heat out of the out of the compost pile that's on top of the slab, um, then gets looped through these barrels and the barrels act as a heat exchanger. So the hot water travels through that pipe and then transfers the heat from the compost pile into the barrel. And then these barrels get superheated and then release that heat from the compost pile all through the day and the night. So that allows us to actually extract heat from the compost pile during the daytime, because you really don't need that heat during the day in your greenhouse. But we're storing that heat from the compost pile that's generated during the daytime and storing it in the water in here, and then we're able to use that heat that's even generated during the daytime from those compost piles. Is there a main reservoir with a pump? Is it, did you already mention that? Um, yeah, we've just got a small circulation pump in okay. the shed that moves the, the water in those pipes. Is there like a reservoir that it like to buffer it a little bit or no there is a, a hot water heater okay uh, just a backup heater that we actually haven't used yet okay so that's you know 40 gallons or so that's the only reservoir and so is there any consideration uh, approximately how large are the compost piles out there uh, is there any relation to the size of those compost piles or the amount of heat that they're putting out to the number of barrels or the amount of space that you're heating that you're running the, the water through? You know, the amount of compost that slab holds, each zone on it holds about 45 cubic yards of, of compost material, so 90 cubic yards. But that I would love to do research to figure out, okay, what's the perfect amount of barrels right. to fit that amount of compost? Or say if you need yeah. so many degrees of heat gain at a certain mm -hmm. point in the winter, about how large of a compost or how much heat gain do you need per cubic foot inside of a... Yeah, and they have greenhouse calculator systems will tell you, you know, how many BTUs you need for your climate to size your heater system. And that system there, we know, can give us, you know, 15 to 30,000 BTUs an hour um, heat extraction from that. It's got both compost piles on it, so. Well, it sounds like you can get a pretty rough back of the envelope calculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think these are pretty efficient at extracting almost all the heat out of the, out of the system, but yeah, probably probably get too many barrels connected. It's probably a point of diminishing returns. So you mentioned speedling flats in the podcast. Your, uh, your, what you're transplanting out in the field, can you explain what's going on here with these? Yeah, so these speedling flats, um, they're designed to work with our mechanical transplanter. Uh, the cell size uh, fits in the mechanical transplanter very well. But the speedling trays also, uh, it's the only flat that I've used where you can pull the transplants out from the top. So you get it the right moisture setting, once the root ball is filled in there, it's very easy to just pop them out, which is important with the mechanical transplanter because you need to be able to pull them out super fast as you're going sure. to the field. Um, that's kind of your limiting factor of how fast you can transplant is how fast you can pull them out. So you don't want to have to like pop them out from the back or have to deal with all that because they want, need to stay vertical right. on this carousel as you're on that transplanter. Um, and also I saw some research that was done in Florida looking at different transplant um, flat systems and the speedling transplants perform the best. So I think the transplants do better for some reason. And those are just like styrofoam? Yeah, it's just styrofoam. The only problem with it is that it's not very durable. I was going to wonder like about that, yeah. you bang it too hard, it's going to break. Yeah. It, the, the UV light degrades it, so it's not good to have them in the, you know, leave them outside in the sun where they're going to be exposed to sunlight. So you do have to take better care of them. They don't last as long, and they're expensive, so there is some some downfall to them, but they work well. You can't nest them inside of each other, so they take a lot of space up in storage as well, but I still love them.